Welcome back to another video with us here at LMDN STEM Academy. In this video, we will be working to the June 2005 Unit 1 Paper 2. And this question is a question on energetics. So the first part of this, part A, asks us to explain the meaning of the term enthalpy or enthalpy change of a reaction. Right, and this is really the cornerstone of all things energetics, right? So in any chemical reaction, when the amounts of reactants shown in the equation are converted to products, heat energy is exchanged between the system and the surroundings. And this is known as the enthalpy change of a reaction. All right. Part B says, with reference to energy profile diagrams and bond energies, explain the difference between endothermic and exothermic reactions. Okay, so there are two things that need to be accomplished in our answer here. We have to draw energy profile diagrams, and within that, we have to show this idea of bond energies, right? So here... I have two graphs and I've labeled the axes already. Here's my energy on the y-axis and here's my reaction pathway on the x-axis, okay? So let's draw the endothermic one on the left. So I'm just gonna label this endothermic, right? So this one is gonna be my endothermic energy profile diagram showing bond energies. And this one over here will be my exothermic, okay? All right. So generally, we know that for an endothermic reaction, the reactants, right, will be at a lower energy level or enthalpy, right, than the products. So our products would be over here, right? And let me just bring that down just a little bit lower. All right. So in every, let me label it. Let me label the reactants so we can see that before I go on any further. So my reactants will be down here. And my products will be up there. Okay. In any reaction that we have, in order for our reactants to be converted to product, there needs to be a breaking of the bonds that are in that react in those reactants. And that that process is an endothermic process. So I show my arrow going up. In fact, I'm going to make it a little bit longer than that. Okay, so I'm going to show it going up and so that represents the bond breaking right of all of the bonds that are in the reactants when i break the bonds i'm going to end up in a transition state right where i now have the, an in between right so say i had a reactant that was a single bond a and I broke that bond, in my transition state, I'm going to have the A's, two of them, just by themselves, right? So this is a mo diatomic molecule of A, and now I just have the monoatoms, right? So by themselves, two of them. When I want to form my product, whatever that product may be, so let me put another reactant there, right? B and B, right? So then when I broke B and B here, via this, this step, which required me to put in energy, I'll have two Bs there as well, right? When I form my product, so say my product ended up being 2AB, right? In order to form that product, that is that bond forming process is exothermic. So it comes back down, okay? So that's bond forming. And that is exothermic. So that's why we came back down. So let me just write that. The bond forming process is an exothermic process. The bond breaking process is an endothermic process. 
So what we notice, what we can say then in summary, is that for an endothermic reaction, what we see is that ultimately what happens is that the amount of energy required for bond breaking, right? You see the length of that arrow? It turns out that that is greater than the energy release on bond forming. Okay, so let's just summarize that here because that's one of the key points that they want us to capture in our answer, right? And that's in an endothermic reaction, the energy required for bond breaking is greater than that released upon bond forming. So ultimately, it ends up being endothermic. It's a net positive, right? So that's why our reactants end up being higher, our products end up being higher than our reactants because at the end of the day, we ended up putting in more energy than we had initially, okay? All right, so in light of this, you can imagine what would be happening in the exothermic case, right? We know that generally speaking, right, in an exothermic reaction, we have our reactants being higher, right, than our products. So let me just bring our products down here. Right. So I'm just going to label that these would be our reactants up here. And down here, we would have our products. So that's an exothermic reaction. And in terms of bond energies, what's happening is that we're always going to have to go up, right? We're always going to have to go up because we're going to have to put in energy to break up whatever bonds were in here, right? So say it's A. A and say I have, let's say I have a B double bond B, right? I still have to put in energy to break these bonds. And so I'm going to have to go up initially, right? And that is my bond breaking step. So that's endothermic. So I still have to go up initially. Right? So then I'll end up with a transition state, which will be these guys in their single atom state. So it will be 2A plus 2B again, just as before. Right? And then I'm going to have to come down to get to the products. Right? That's bond forming. Bond forming. Okay, and in this case, bond forming, bond forming is always exothermic, right? But what happens is that in this case, the energy released upon bond forming is greater than the energy that we had to put in for bond breaking. So the net effect then is that overall, this process is exothermic, Right, And so that's how we explain the difference between endo and exo using bond energies. Right, So let me just write something parallel to what I wrote here, just for completeness. In an exothermic reaction, what is happening is that the energy required for bond breaking so the amount of energy that we had to put in the system to break the bonds is less than the energy that gets released upon bond forming okay
Okay, so that is the reason why we see that this is exothermic because this is greater than the bond breaking. And then in this case, your bond breaking is greater than your bond forming. So that's why this one is endothermic, okay? So just keep this thing in mind. You know, we had known previously that for endothermic, the products would be higher than the reactants. And we knew that for exo, the reactants would be higher than the products. But in terms of bond energies now, this is what they really wanted us to capture in this question. It's these changes and how those changes feed into us being able to say, oh, in the end, this is endothermic. And in the end, this is exothermic. Okay. All right.